Now, former Cabinet Minister Liam Fox has said that the Department for International Trade should be scrapped, which is somewhat of a surprise, given that he was the first ever Secretary of State for that department and therefore set it up. He joins us now. Liam, thank you for joining us this morning. Um, why? I mean, you were, the, you were there, you set it up, you were the first Secretary of State. Why, why should it be scrapped? Well, I didn't say it should be scrapped. What I really meant was it should be upgraded. And we need to have a proper economic department that takes the advantages post-Brexit. And much of Whitehall, almost all of Whitehall, in fact, is still shaped the same way as it was before we left the European Union, as though nothing had happened. Of course, a lot of the civil service would like to think that nothing did happen. We set up the Department for International Trade to make Britain ready for the point that we left the European Union, but it needs to go further than that now. And I think that Bayes, the Department for Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy, industrial strategy that we don't have uh, anymore, uh, is not really uh, in a, a fit place for what's required of it. So I would like to see energy taken out of Bayes, where I've always thought it was misplaced, given that it's uh, involved with energy security and a whole range of environmental issues, and then create a business trade and investment department, I would bring all of the functions of inward and outward investment into that department. And I would actually bring the digital parts of what's currently DCMS into that department too, and create a proper outward looking uh, business department, business investment and trade that was looking to maximise the opportunities for us post Brexit, because I think that the current strategy of Whitehall is too complacent. The government always boasts about how many trade deals have been agreed since we left the EU and since the department was set up. Um, and so wh why, would you, why would you change something that the government seems to be saying is, is working very well? Well, we were able to replicate the EU's trade agreements before we left the European Union. That's one of the main reasons why DIT was set up. Now we have to go further. And trade agreements... Uh, are only a piece of paper if no one actually wants to export. We need to encourage British companies to export more. We're, we're well behind some of our main competitors on that. Um, as I was saying, and, and as we looked at in the Global Britain Commission, which I chair, if you're in countries in, in places like the Gulf, you, you, you're falling over French and German representatives trying to push their country's business. And I don't think that we give sufficient help to our businesses. I don't think we give enough encouragement to our exporters. We've identified hundreds of thousands of companies who could be exporting but are not. And that, of course, would generate a lot of wealth for the UK. And a lot of our debate, and I was listening to your previous debate, is about how we spend our money. There's very little debate about how we raise our money, how we create more but wealth. But lots of in this people country. are saying, Liam, have we seen any of that Brexit dividend? Lots of people who are watching this programme now say we voted for Brexit because we wanted to see growth, we wanted to see exports. Have we seen enough? When's that going to come? Well, of course, a lot of trade has been massively interrupted by the pandemic and it's quite difficult to read international trade statistics. So there's a lot of problems still in the global economy uh, that really result from supply chain disruption. Uh, some of that's now settling uh, in maritime uh, availability. That's now settling. Um, Britain's actually been better at selling post-Brexit into the European Union than the European Union has been to us. Our exports to the European Union have been at an all-time high. But we do need to be looking to see how we encourage more British companies to export. And we need to find ways to help them do that. Every time a company exports, it makes the company more viable, makes it more profitable, generates more profit and more taxes, which, of course, help with the rest of our economic and, problems. And that's and I think what our viewers want to see now. You know, we voted for it a long time ago. You know, where's it going? Now, look, something else which we've been talking about all morning, in fact, the station's been talking about all week, and this has been the strike action that's going on. Obviously, Dr Liam Fox, that's what you were, a GP. So my question to you is, would you be somebody going on strike now? Do you have sympathy for nurses going on strike what would you be doing? I have sympathy for nurses, but not for going on strike. And I think that we need to look at some of the wider problems in the NHS. And I think that we need to look at what people would call technically the flow problem. And something that Steve Barclay, I have to say, has been more on top of than any of the previous health sectors I've known. And one of our problems is that we have so many people occupying acute beds in acute hospitals, which are very expensive, very intensive for staff. And they really don't need to be there. We need, to, in my view, to go back to our concept of convalescent hospitals, 
And I think that we need to ensure that people are getting the appropriate care because if you've got people occupying those acute beds who don't need to be there, it doesn't matter how much money you pour into the system, you're not going to get the output that's appropriate for that. So I would like to see us develop um, uh, a system of convalescent care. And actually, Esther, I would use it in two ways because there's a lot of evidence that if you give older patients, for example, a, a very good high protein diet before they come into hospital, then their recovery times are very much quicker for things like surgery. So I think the answers to the NHS don't lie in spending vast amounts of money on management. I think it lies in the medicine and getting the appropriate care for the appropriate patients. And if we move to some of that convalescent care, it's less staff intensive. It gives the patients the, the right level of care. And, you know, with older patients, remember, they, they, manage, Doctor, they may have many Do Dr. Liam Fox, at the same time. we're going to have to go to the break. But am I right in saying you wouldn't be striking? Yes or no? No, you, no definitely wouldn't. Right. Thank you very much.